Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about Android development and iOS development and some kind of considerations basically working with each of them. So let's get into it. You see, the other day I had a user question or a, sorry, a subscriber or viewer. I actually don't know if, if the person in question was a subscriber. Doesn't really matter. It was, an, it was a good question. And the question was basically, you know, how do I feel about working in iOS development and in Android development and kind of some considerations and some learnings that I've taken away from working in both these on these platforms basically to give you a little bit of context i worked i well, part of my education was based on android development i have made more than like a, a few android projects so one one or two of them has been at the professional level most of them have just been my own projects and ios development i work i basically i work in swift and i've been doing so for a small startup company that i work for part-time roughly two one and a half years two years something like that i'm not an expert in any way of course but yeah that, that's basically my background and so being being the sort of person who's been working on both platforms i've thought it could be useful to share some things that i can like that i've learned so far so let's let's just uh, let's just say something to to start off with the first thing that we need to address here is that since you are in two completely different environments, there are always going to be things that are better in one environment as opposed to another environment. And since there is no real way for you to get, like if your users are on an iOS device, you have to use, use Swift or Objective-C. If they are on an Android device, you have to use Kotlin or Java or some, some JVM based system. It's most likely going to be one of those two. And that's kind of the lay of the land. So having this uh, discussion about, okay, which one is better or like that, it's, it doesn't really make sense, right? Because there's no such thing as something that is be better in this scenario because it's specific to one platform. I mean, if you have the discussion, is uh, C Sharp better than Java? It's a very pointless discussion if you have to cater to the Windows platform, for example. If you don't, that's another discussion. And so I want us to remember that, that the, these, this, the, like my analysis of this is just a completely subjective thing that I've found myself. If you want a job as a mobile developer, you can pick either one. I'll just tell you my take on matters. So let's start by talking about how it is to work in iOS and specifically in Swift. I can't give you Objective-C's perspective because I haven't worked in Objective-C. But on, on average, I can tell you that Objective-C is to me, like, it's a horrible language. Like, it, the syntax is, I, I'm sorry. It doesn't, like, I'm very happy that Swift came along because it's so much nicer. I will even argue that Swift is probably, as of today, one of my two favorite corporate level languages, or strictly typed languages. It is beautiful. Swift is really, really beautiful. The only only issue I see with Swift as as of today is that Apple doesn't even seem to like they're so far behind and so like almost it almost feels like they they <clears throat> they're trying to do something that they are not really good at, which is to make a good developer developer experience. Like the libraries and the APIs and all that stuff are still catching up. To, the language itself is still catching up. I mean, Xcode didn't have full support for Swift until fairly recently and it's not completely supported i would actually get error messages when i try to do certain things for saying that this is just supported in objective c so right now for in my opinion swift is trying to give you the same sort of power and support that objective c has given you for such a long time apart from that i have to say that working in xcode overall is uh, it's an okay experience. I don't like the editor all that much. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not bad. It's just that it's not as nice as the other options that are out there. But I have to say that the view framework, like the way that they have structured the application development is really nice. There is a lot of power there, a lot of power in that platform, in this iOS platform, assuming that you avoid storyboards. For the love of God, avoid storyboards. The reason why I say that you should avoid storyboards is because if you want to have any type of meaningful version control and 
power over your system, I don't use them. I just ignore them. Like there is, uh, and then this is of course I'm not a master of this, but anything that cannot be version controlled in an effective manner, where diffs makes you know when when the diff doesn't make any sense in Git or whatever you're using, it's it becomes very tricky tricky at scale. Apart from that, I can also mention that there are quite a few things about the people who are showing you Swift and iOS development. There are so many people out there showing you this type of development that is maybe right for an amateur or for somebody who is uh, at the beginning of their career or like low level programming. But it's very, very hard to actually find some, someone who's really good at iOS development. The only person I have found so far that I really like is Brian Wong. He has the hands down the best channel for iOS development. The I I don't have to check his CV because I know he's good just by li listening to he, him think. So what about Android development? Well, Android development is a lot quicker than anything that Swift has or iOS has. You can build an APK, you can distribute it, you don't have to go all the have to go through all the bullshit of setting up a, a Apple developers account. All that shit is just taken care of. It just it's just easier. And apart from that, you have a a very nice in development experience. Your in, in your uh, ID is based on IntelliJ, which is one of the if not the best uh, development uh, development experience in well well not universally, but at least in Java in Java land. So in Android, you're going to use either Java or Kotlin. Now, what's nice about this is that Kotlin, for example. Kotlin is, in my opinion, probably one of the strongest candidates to be pretty close to just a new and very a much nicer version of Java. It's basically, to me, Kotlin is doing what Groovy and Scala and all these other attempts of switching out Java is doing. Like they're doing something. Like it's so much nicer. And the best part is that Swift and Java, I'm oh, sorry, Swift and Kotlin, they're so close to each other syntax-wise, and all the features, like most of the features are there. So it's like these two languages, like they are just priceless. I love Swift and I love Kotlin. They are really good. And so then you have Java, of course, which is the old way of, well, it's still fair. I'm pretty sure that it's still the way to write Android applications since Kotlin it hasn't been around all that long. Now. What I like about this part, like, the nice part about this is, you know, if you are, in my personal opinion, I might, I know I sound very opinionated now, maybe I am, but if you think about it, if you learn iOS development, if you learn Swift or Objective-C, then you are an iOS developer. That's what you are. If you learn Java or maybe Kotlin and you start doing Android development, you have a la the most universal language in the world, the, most, the second most popular language at your fingertips. In other words, a Java developer going into Android development is going to see a much larger return on investment on learning the Android platform. The reason I'm saying this is because Swift is not used, uh, basically not used, for anything besides iOS development. The same thing goes for Objective-C. Java is. Java is used in most industries. Which means that doing Android development fits, it very nicely flows in to a bigger picture, if you will. And I think that's very valuable. So, personally I would say, A, I, I prefer working in Android almost every day of the week. There are issues with APIs and compatibilities and all this other stuff, but I'm very happy to, to make that trade since the value of knowing Java is so high and since the development experience is so nice and the best thing no no apple developers account that is that is a big win for me well try it out i mean as i said ios is not bad android isn't bad you kind of have to learn both if you want to be a really good well if you want to be a really good uh, mobile developer really. Have a great day.